Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, I hope you're all doing really well. So in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make this really easy vintage style pumpkin shoulder bag using cross stitch on top of crochet. This is a guide for complete beginners in both crochet and cross stitch and I hope you all enjoy this tutorial and let's get into it. Okay so for this project I'm going to be using about 100 grams of this chunky dark green yarn. This is from Mariner Yarns and this is their double knit chunky acrylic yarn. So for the cross stitch colours you are going to be needing a variety. So firstly the main colour of the pumpkin, so this is going to be a kind of burnt orange colour. This is double knit acrylic yarn so it's a little bit finer than the chunky yarn I'm going to be using for the main part of the bag but I'm going to be using double knit for all of the cross stitch section. And then I'm going to be using this kind of light brown colour for the background. So you can make your background any colour you want. On the graph it is just the outside portion of the square. So it is everything outside of the pumpkin design. And it is left blank but you can make this any colour you want. And I'm going to be going with this light brown colour. And then for the stalk and the leaves I'm going to be using this khaki green colour. And this is also double knit. And then for the kind of swirly vines that go around the pumpkin, I'm using this dark green double knit yarn. And then for the berries, I've got this bright red and a darker berry red. I've just got some scrap yarn for that. And then for the shine on the pumpkin, I've just got a little bit of scrap white double knit yarn. And then finally, I'm going to be using this dark brown yarn to do kind of an outline around the whole design. And I'm going to be doing this in a back stitch. I'm also going to be using a 6.5mm hook for this project and then I also have a smaller hook so this is a 5mm hook um, just in case the stitches get a little bit tight um, you may want to have a smaller hook nearby. I'm also going to need a stitch marker, some scissors, a sewing needle. Okay so I'm going to start off with the main part of the bag and that is going to be with the green yarn. So you just want to take your green yarn and make a slip knot. And then grab your larger hook, which is for me the 6.5mm, place it on the hook. And then you can make a chain of however wide you want the bag to be. I'm going to make the bag about 23 chains long. So however many chains you decide, you always want to add one extra chain. So once you have your chain, we are just going to be working two single crochets into the second back bump from the hook. Now what I mean by the back bump is that behind all of these chains are these kind of horizontal lines going across and those are the back bumps. So there will always be a back bump behind each chain. So I'm going to flip the chains over to the back and then I'm going to insert my hook where that second back bump is. So where the second chain is, that's the first and that's the second. And I'm going to insert my hook into that second chain or the second back bump and then I'm going to make my first single crochet into that back bump so I'll yarn over and pull through that back bump you should have two loops on the hook and then you want to yarn over again and pull through those two loops and I'm doing these single crochets quite loose because I want to make it easier for me to go into the posts of each one into when I do the second round. So I'm going to do two single crochets into that second back bump. So I'm going to add another one. Inserting my hook into that back bump, yarn over and pull through. Two loops on the hook, I'm going to yarn over and pull through those two loops. Like that. Again, doing those single crochets quite loose. Now I'm just going to make one single crochet into each back bump all the way across and then when I get to that final back bump, which is this one right here, I'm going to do another two single crochets.
Okay, so once you have done your two single crochets into that last back bump, we're now just going to kind of tilt the work around so that we're now working on the opposite side of the chain. I'm going to insert my hook into that next st uh, V stitch right here. So as you can see, in that final back bump, we kind of technically went into this first one. So we're going into the next one available, which is right here. And I'm just going to make my single crochet into that V. So because we worked into the back bumps on the previous side, we are now able to work into the V stitches on the opposite side. It just makes it a bit neater and a bit easier. I'm going to yarn over and pull through. Yarn over and pull through two. Again, with a loose tension, into the next V stitch, insert my hook, yarn over and pull through, and then yarn over and pull through two. So I'm going to continue that all the way across, and I'm just going to be doing one single crochet in each because we've already got our two single crochets either side. So you'll know when to finish once you reach that quite loose stitch right at the end. So your final stitch will be this one right here and then there'll be a very tight stitch right here. It's very small um, and that was the turning chain. So this was our first sort of single crochet. So just to make it a bit easier, I am going to place the stitch marker where that stitch is just to so I know where that final stitch is. So I'm just doing my last single crochet and then you should see that very tight stitch and then where the stitch marker is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my next stitch of the next round and once I've done my first stitch I will replace the stitch marker um, back into the original place. So I'm going to take the stitch marker out and I'm going to start my next round and for this round and for all of the rounds going forward we are now going to be working into the posts of each stitch. So rather than going into the V's at the top, we are actually going to be inserting the hook where these kind of V stitches are below the top V's. So as you can see here, each stitch has kind of its own little V legs kind of situation. So I'm going to be inserting my hook through the middle of those first two little V stitch posts right here. So as you can see, here are the kind of V legs. I'm going to insert my hook through those V legs and you want to make sure that your hook is coming out the other side to the side of those legs, so not through the middle. So here is what it would look like if you inserted your hook through the middle of the legs. You'd kind of be struggling to push them through the middle and you'd be kind of splitting those two little lines open like that. So when you push your hook through, you're actually separating those legs like that. But you don't want to do that. So you have your little V lines going down either side and then you should have the V stitch on top. You want to insert your hook into kind of the side of those legs. So the side part, and when you push your hook out to the other side, your hook sits on the left side of those legs on the line and then you just make your single crochets normal through that stitch and then you just want to place your stitch marker back in there and you can insert your stitch marker through that post to make it easier so you know which actual stitch you're going into for the next round. Because we had two single crochets going into this one stitch now means that we have to do one more in that same kind of space. So the next one is right here. As you can see, we have these two vertical lines of these legs. So I'm going to be pushing my hook through. And as you can see here, you can see this one a little bit easier. So we have these kind of two legs going down the middle. They're kind of clumped together, but you can see 
these two legs. So you can see this a bit better, it's as if there are kind of three lines going on. So we have the two legs and when we push the hook through to the back and flip the work to the back, you'll see that there are kind of the two lines, so either side here, one and two, and then there's this kind of stripe going down horizontally in the middle. So you want to insert your hook to the left of that stripe going down the middle and it's kind of through the left leg. If you're right-handed, it'll be the opposite. You want to insert your hook through the middle of the post, but you want to make sure that your, your hook is poking out to the right side. So everything that I'm doing will be kind of inverted and flipped um, mirrored to the other side, which can sound a bit confusing, but essentially when you push your hook through the post, your hook will be either going to the left if you're left-handed or the right if you're right-handed. And then you just complete your single crochet as normal. And the reason you want to push your hook to the side rather than going right through the middle is because it keeps the stitches neat um, and straight on top of each other. So now I'm going into the next post. Again, I'm kind of feeling and poking my hook through that kind of left left leg and I'm making sure that the hook enters through the side leaving that middle and right leg on the side. If you're right handed you'll be pushing the hook through the right side of the stitch and when you flip the work to the back you'll notice that the hook will be sitting on the left side with the middle and like right leg um, together on the other side. So just make your single crochet as normal. Again, I'm still doing this with a loose tension so that I can make sure I can go into each stitch much easier. And then again, pushing my hook through the center, but just making sure when I push the hook through that it is only picking up like that left leg. So I'm leaving those, um, the center vertical line and the right leg um, to the right single crochet. And then into the next stitch, insert your hook through the post, but again, only going through that left leg, leaving those two right legs um, to the side. If you are finding that pushing your hook through in the technique that I have just demonstrated is a bit too difficult, you can do it the kind of normal way where you push it through the center of those legs like that. However, your stitches will be kind of curved to the side and you know, I just personally want it to be nice and straight. So if I just demonstrate it one more time, Kind of separate it so you can see we've got the left leg and the right leg and then we've kind of got this center vertical line in the middle as you can see so left leg vertical line in the middle and right leg so i'm kind of just inserting my hook through just the left leg it is technically through the middle of the post but you're kind of leaving the middle and right line alone so when you push it through the other side you're only grabbing that left leg and then you just make your single crochet as normal like I said, if you're right-handed, it will be the opposite. You'll be inserting your hook where that kind of right leg is, leaving the center and left leg alone and push to the side. So I'm going to just continue that now all the way around, making sure that my tension is nice and loose. And then I will meet you back when I get to the end of the round. Okay, so I am just about to do my last single crochet. So I just took the stitch marker out so I'm just going to insert my hook where that kind of left leg of the post is pushing my hook through the other side and just doing my last single crochet like that and then I'm going to place my stitch marker through the post of that single crochet that I just did like that okay so that is row two all complete so you just want to repeat row two until you get to about halfway up of the bag height that you want so I'm just going into my next single crochet stitch, which is right here. I'm just going to insert my hook into that post, finding that left side of it, making my single crochet. And then I would just continue exactly what I did for row two all the way around, just doing single crochets through the post on that left side. Again, if you're right handed, it's on the right side. I'm going all the way around and I'm going to continue that until the bag height reaches about halfway 
to how I want it. Okay, so I've done 17 rows in total and now I'm going to do the decrease row. So I am going to be basically skipping the first stitch and then the stitch on the opposite side. So it doesn't really need to be counted, it's just whatever stitch is kind of sitting on the other edge. So for the first stitch, I'm just going to simply skip that next V post and I'm going to just do my single crochet into the following V post like that and then I'm just going to continue to single crochet round until I reach the other side So once you get to the stitch on the edge, you just want to skip the next post and do the exact same thing. Single crochet into the following post. And then it just continue to make your single crochets all the way around until you reach the stitch marker. Okay, so I've just done that last single crochet, so I'm just going to place the stitch marker back into that post. So this is what it looks like when you decrease, so you're effectively going to make the work come inwards, therefore the top kind of half of the bag is going to be a little bit less wide than the bottom. And you can do as many decrease rows as you want. Personally I like to alternate between a decrease row just like we did and then a normal row and then alternate that until I'm happy with the height. If you don't want to decrease anymore, you can just continue up until the bag reaches the height you want with normal rows. You can customise this pretty much to any shape you like. The more decrease rows you do, the thinner it's going to get in width. The less decrease rows you do, the more square it's going to appear. Um, so it's really just about your preference. So I'm now going to be alternating between the decrease row that I've just done and then a normal row until the bag reaches the height I want. So I'll let you know how many rows I end up doing and then I will come back and show you the next step. Okay, so I've just done my final row. Okay, so in total I've done 24 rows. So after row 17, I alternated between a normal row and a decrease row and I just continued that until I got to row 24. So now I'm just going to fasten off, just going to chain one and cut the yarn. I'll weave that in a little bit later. Okay, so I'm now going to work on the bag strap. So you're going to want to make a slip knot with your main colour and you can insert your hook at any point on the bag, but you want to make sure that it is kind of central-ish, kind of making sure that wherever you insert your hook to start your bag strap, you are doing it at the same um, point on the opposite side. So I'm just going to insert my hook into this chain here, which is from the edge about the one, two, three, four, fifth chain, uh, fifth stitch from the edge. So I'm just going to insert my hook and I'm going to pull that slip knot through and then just make a chain of however long you want the strap to be. So I've just done 46 chains and you want to just make sure that your chain is not twisted so it's facing the front. You're then going to basically make a single crochet into that fifth stitch from the edge or however many stitches you went from the edge. So I'm just going to count one, two, three, four, five and then I'm going to make a single crochet into that fifth stitch from the edge like that. So after that single crochet you then just want to make a slip stitch in that same stitch like that. Okay, and then we're going to start the row for the actual bag strap. So I'm just going to turn the work around. And I'm basically going to be going into each back bump of each stitch. So I'm just finding that next back bump of the next chain. Inserting my hook and I'm making a slip stitch through that stitch. And then I'm going into the next back bump of the next chain. Again, you might have to pull it out to kind of get hold of it. like that and then you just want to make your slip stitch again so I'm just going to continue that all the way across the whole chain okay so once you've done your last slip stitch you then just want to slip stitch back into that original stitch on the bag where we made that first chain one 
So I'm just going to slip stitch into that stitch like that and then you just want to chain one and cut the yarn. Just pull tight and then that is what the bag strap looks like on this side. So you just want to repeat that exact same thing on the opposite side and then fasten off and then you want to weave in all of your ends and then I'm going to come back and show you how to do the cross stitch design. Okay, so I'm now swapping to the cross stitch section and I'm grabbing my smaller hook. So I'm going to be using a 2.5 millimeter hook for the cross stitch panel. If you want to use something like a three millimeter or even a four millimeter hook, that's fine as well. So I've just chained up the height of the graph plus one. So as you can see along the vertical side of the graph, that is going to be 22 squares. However, I've added one extra chain for the turning chain. So in total, I've got 23 chains that I've just chained up with my light brown yarn I'm going to be using for the like cross stitch panel. Uh, just like we did with the bag, I'm going to be single crocheting into the back bumps of each chain. So I'm just going into that second back bump from the hook and I'm going to make my single crochet. And then I'm going to single crochet into the next back bump and into the next and I'm working all the way down making single crochets. Mm -hmm. So once you get to the end of the row you just want to turn the work around so no chain one and you just want to make one single crochet into each stitch and that is going to complete your second row so as you can see we are going to be doing as many rows as are along the bottom edge of the graph so that's 26 rows in total so i'm just going to simply single crochet into each stitch all the way to the end of the row and then when i get to the end of row two i will just turn the row again and do another row of single crochet and I'm just going to keep doing that until I have 26 rows in total and then I'm just going to chain one and fasten off so you should have a nice kind of rectangular square shape that we are going to be attaching to the bag later on so I'm going to complete the rest off camera and then I'm going to show you how we actually cross stitch the design on to the work okay so this is what it should look like once you have completed your square and you want to make sure that you flip it so that kind of lines of each row are facing vertically um, that means that you've got the cross stitch panel the right way up and i'm going to be starting with the first color which is going to be green um, this is the khaki green color and this is for the stalk of the pumpkin and i personally just like to work from the top down because I think it's easier than working from the bottom up because sometimes when you go up a row working from the bottom upwards um, you have to do the cross stitch in the row above a different way and it just kind of makes things a bit complicated so we are going to be counting the squares where the 14th and 15th stitch is on row 21 so these holes right at the top and then the holes just below it are going to be row 22 and basically each square on the graph consists of four holes on our panel. So as you can see right at the top we have our kind of first row of holes and our second row and when we hold the panel you should see that there are four dots like this that make up a square. So one, two, three, four is going to be the first square of row 22 if we move two holes across we will count then the second square of row 22 and then if we move across two more holes we will count the third square of row 22. So when we count our squares across um, we only need to move across two uh, vertical holes. When we want to move down a row we just move down two holes from the previous. So if we say that this square right here is our first square of row 22 so we've got our four holes one two three and four our row our square below it is going to be just two holes below it so down two and then we have our four holes here which is going to be the first square of row 21 so on the graph our first two stitches are going to be row 21 and it's stitch 14 and 15 so I'm going to count across until I get to 14. 
So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. So our fourteenth stitch is going to start in the bottom left corner of that hole and we're going to go up to the top right. So you want to insert your needle from the back to the front and pull through in that bottom left hole. And you want to leave a small tail at the back and just hold it there with your finger and it should just hold itself there and weave in by itself. To do the half one half of the cross stitch we go up to the top right hole and pull through like that and then to complete the cross stitch we go down to the bottom right hole and pull through and then go back up to the top left hole so you always want to go bottom left to top right bottom right to top left so that is going to be our first cross stitch and as you can see on row 21 we have another green cross stitch right next to it. So the one right next to it is only going to be two holes next to where we just finished. So you want to now go across to where that bottom right hole is of this, this square or it would technically be the bottom left hole of the next square and you just want to pull through. You want to go up to the top right and pull through, back down to the bottom right and pull through, and then back up to the top left and pull through. So as you can see, those first two cross stitches have been completed. Now I can move on to the next row. So that is going to be row 20 and we need to do three cross stitches and it's going to be at stitch 14, 15 and 16. So now I'm going to show you a technique that can speed up those cross stitches. But if you want to just do each one individually, you can. But if you want to kind of do it a bit quicker, then what you can do is start your first cross stitch going from the bottom left hole and pull through, go up to the top right and pull through. Now we're going to start the first half of the next square, so I'm going into the next bottom left hole and pulling through and then I'm going to go back up to that top right hole and pull through and then I'm going to do the exact same thing for the 16th square. So I'm going to go into that bottom left hole of the next square and pull through and then go back up to that top right. So now you can see that we've got three of these half cross stitches and now I'm going to go back the opposite way from the bottom right hole to the top left and repeat that two more times so that the crosses fill themselves in. So that's pretty much all you have to do to do the cross stitch. So I'm going to be working on the green stalk up here first and then I'm going to move on to the dark green like vine section and then I'm going to work on the pumpkin um, part and then the white sheen section and then the bottom part which is the leaves and the berries. So I'm kind of just doing it piece by piece and that's pretty much all you need to know for your um, cross stitches and then when you want to cut the yarn and fasten the colour off you can just weave your needle into the back of the work to tuck it in and then just cut it um, so it's nice and simple and then when you want to do a new colour you can just grab your new one and cut a long string and repeat the same process um, but just make sure that you are counting your squares correctly and make sure that your panel is facing up vertically so all of these lines are vertical um, and yeah, I'm going to come back when the design is all complete and then I will show you the next step.
Okay, so this is what it looks like once you have finished your cross stitch design. And now I'm going to finish the cross stitch design with basically an outline around the edge of everything just to kind of make the design pop a bit more. So I'm using my dark brown yarn and I've just cut a long string and I'm going to be doing the back stitch which is just a really simple sewing stitch to create an outline. So I'm just going to start at the top and you can start anywhere on the design and you just want to go from the back to the front of the work and pull through. Again leave a kind of short tail at the back and then you just want to go into kind of the next space along to create a small line like that. It's kind of like a running stitch and we're basically just going to go into the kind of next rather than going into this space right here because if we did go into that space we would just undo the stitch we've done we're actually going into kind of the next space right down here and I'm just going to pull through and then I'm going to bring the yarn back to where that original spot was like that. Then as you can see the stalk kind of goes down so I'm going to insert my needle from the back to the front just below where we just did that previous um, back stitch. Pull through and then bring it up to join that stitch with the others like that. So essentially we are kind of working in the reverse rather than just working all the way across we're kind of going ahead and then looping it back over so hopefully now you can kind of see how it works and i'm basically just going to do this outline all the way around the edge you don't have to if you don't want to and you could use a darker color if you wanted to i just wanted it to be quite kind of a subtle outline okay so i've just completed the outline and now i'm going to do the cross stitch um, design where i'm basically going to be attaching this panel to the bag with cross stitches. So I'm going to be using this white yarn because I just want a nice contrast and kind of the design to pop more. So I've just cut a long string of this white yarn and I'm going to be starting in the top left corner and work across, down, across the bottom and back up. I'm going to insert my needle from the back inside of the bag and I'm kind of going to come out to the edge of the patch. So just that top corner edge, so I'm going from the back to the front of the bag and then I'm going to kind of catch a stitch on the patch like that and then I'm just going to pull through again, just going to leave a short tail at the back like that, just hold it there. So obviously with, with the normal cross stitches we kind of go up to the top right so just find a hole kind of nearby on the actual green part of the bag and you're going to kind of go diagonally up to the right on any part of the green bag but just make sure that it's kind of a short line and then just pull through like that and then you just want to repeat that again, go into the next sort of stitch on the patch, again going from the inside of the bag and then catching a stitch on the patch and then pull through. And then go up sort of a stitch to the green part of the bag only and then just push your needle through there and pull through. So we're basically just creating half cross stitches all the way around the edge and then once I have done all of these kind of lines I'm going to kind of work the opposite direction so going down the side across the bottom back up and across the top with the um, cross stitches completed so I'm going to go from the bottom right hole up to the top left
And that is what the final result looks like. I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. It was a really fun project to make and I would love to see all of your vintage pumpkin bags. And I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.